the goal of this tutorial is to control the differential drive car using velocity control. I will link the script, the TTT file of the differential drive car so you can download that as you start doing this exercise. So what we'll do first is to create a thread, non-threaded script, which will be written in Lua. Uh, this is the script. If you double click that, what will pop up is a code which looks like this. There are four functions. The first function is the init function. It's called once. The actuation and sensing function are the ones where you will have your actuation and sensing code. It will be called every single time the code runs. So let's do this and then move on to the next step. Okay, so this is the differential drive car, which I created in the previous tutorial. Now I'm going to associate a script. So I'll say add associated child script, non-threaded Lua. And so you see the script appearing here. Double click that. And then you see there's four functions. So the way we write functions and code in order to get the car to move is in this reference, which I'll um, put in the description. Uh, it basically gives you a series of functions which you can use to call different things. And we'll go through that in a bit. But what I'm going to do essentially here is the initialization function. We'll set, we'll, we'll, we'll recognize the right and left joint. We'll set both those joints to do velocity control. So that's this line and then this line. And then we'll set the target velocity to some value, in this case set to minus one and minus one. So it'll move straight. After we do, do this, I'll show you how to change the speed after some time, three seconds, so that one of them is moving faster than the other, which will make the car steer. Look at the API. This is the regular API in uh, Copilia Sim. Uh, this is what you'll refer to if you want to write code. So in this case, I'm interested in getting the handle of the joint. So that's a function called sim.getObject. So click that. So you want to look at the way it is called in Lua. Okay. So we need to get the handle and we'll say sim.getObject. And then we need to give the path of the object. The second argument here is optional. So what do you mean by the path? Well, it's, uh, it's given right here. So if you want to access, in this case, the joint, you will use a uh, forward slash. There are other ways to access it, but we'll just use the forward slash and call the corresponding name in the scene hierarchy. Okay, so let's do that. So double click. Uh, let me call that joint left equals sim dot get object uh, so i need to use open forward slash joint right use and then if you're curious to see what exactly this is doing is just to print joint left and so uh, when we run the simulation it will print joint left right here so let's run this stop so you can see two things one is that it printed number 16 that means that joint left assigned the number 16 and then the other thing to note is that it was only called once okay now we can do the same thing for the other joint and that joint right Yeah, I think I made a mistake. This should be joint. Yeah. It's right. Uh, and then, you know, just to show you that the difference between print here and print there, let's just make it print joint right here. So, what you'll see is that in print joint left once but try and try to print several times because this code, part of the code and actuation is called every single time. And then this, as you can, it's just going 16, 16, 16. And I'm going to stop this. Let's go up. Okay, so you can see that the 18 was the number assigned to joint left, and then 16 was our time to joint right, and that's why you see that. Okay, so that just shows the difference between those functions. Okay, next I'm going to uh, call velocity control. And uh, again, the same thing, you need to go to the regular API, find the right function and do it. So in this case, I just have done this 
ahead of time just to save us some time. So right now I've just set it to minus uh, three and minus three. Uh, the reason you see is that minus three is actually forward direction. That's just the way how I modeled the whole system. So let's close this. You can see it's going straight. Okay, let's stop this. Uh, I think it's a better idea to see this in this view. So I'm going to rotate and zoom out. Okay, that looks good. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the speed of one of the wheels after some time. And so the way you would go about doing that is first I need to get what is the function to access the time, and then we can do that search here. Let's go back and search for time, uh, get simulation time. So the way you call this is uh, so time equals get simulation time. That will just give you the value of the time. Let's just skip this, copy that. And since I want to do this uh, later, after three seconds, I'll just put it in the actuation part of the code. So let me rename this as time equals get uh, I need to put sim dot get simulation time. And then if you're curious, what it will do is just hit print time and then let's run this. And then you can see here it's actually printing the time. Stop this. Now what I want to do here is I want to say if time is greater than three seconds, then uh, then I need to essentially change the velocity of one of those. Let's say that we want this to turn uh, to the uh, clockwise, and so if I wanted to clone clockwise, then I need to change the increase the speed of the left wheel or increase to the right. Let's just increase the speed of the left wheel. So the left wheel is this one. Copy that, paste, and increase. So let's just make it, uh, let's just make it five. And then this, the way Lua works is you need to say end for the if loop. Okay, so everything works right, you should see it's turning clockwise after three seconds, right? So it's turning. And then you can do whatever you want once you have it uh, working this fashion. 